So, I don't know if you guys, I'm going to run this obviously pretty informally since we're, we're an intimate group, but just to let you know who, uh, who I am, um, Captain Doug Toback. Um, I've, been a, I've been a captain um, for, I don't know, like 30 years, been fishing for, or on the water for 45, 50 years. Um, I fish from, uh, from Jersey all the way to Rhode Island. Um, I've chartered, chartered in those places as well. We're doing offshore, uh, offshore and inshore. We shared before, so I know where you guys are from, which is great. Uh, I'm on pro staff for, for Simrad, uh, which is actually really Navico. Simrad is the, is the blue water, um, the blue, the blue water arm, uh, Daiwa as well. Um, pro staff Daiwa and Tony Maja. All right. So, um, that is, that's, you know, sort of the background. You'll hear me refer to their products. Um, but I, uh, feel free to have a seat if you want. Um, you'll, uh, you'll hear me refer to their products. Uh, the, but we started using them before I was actually, uh, actually on the pro staff. Simrad, the way I got engaged with them is I totally made my boat 100% Simrad, um, learned what to do, started testing their stuff, and then we, then they brought me into the fold, their pro staff fold. So, um, as far as what we're going to do today, we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to give you a baseline, actually, of, of what, what the electronics are that you're using right so i'm not going to go into like super depth because it gets really really technical right so what we're going to do though is we're going to give you like a using vocab uh, user uh realistic vocabulary of what we're talking about and then we're going to talk about how to how to how to utilize it so one of the things that you guys heard me talking about before is that it's really important to understand this electronics aren't going to take a person who's who is not a uh fisherman and what i mean by not a fisherman really understand what what you're doing when you're fishing and turn them into a fisherman you have to be a fisherman first you have to understand and the most important thing is you have to understand where the fish are right and where the fish are isn't your electronics going to magically find them you have to do your homework and figure out where you think they're going to be right and then electronics can help dial that in same thing with the way you you, you have to know how to captain your boat you have to generally know the different types of areas that you're fishing in so that you understand what you're looking at on your electronics. So you have to have a level of competency for running your boat and for fishing in order to use uh, your electronics. Like the thing that I said before is that, you know, a hammer is not going to make a carpenter like a killer carpenter. The carpenter is already competent and then he uses his tools to better execute his craft. Same thing with electronics. And this is for fishing. It's not for navigating. Navigating is a totally different animal. Um, navigation can help, can definitely help you and help a, be, a beginner boater. This is just for fishing, all right? Um, so the, the, the concepts, one of the important concepts that confuses people um, is like, hey, how do the electronics even work? So modern electronics work where you have a screen called an MFD. Uh, so the, um, the way modern electronics work is you've got your screens and the screens are all networked together. Now the screens can work standalone. Typically, what's in a screen is uh, GPS and um, it's really GPS in your charts, right? Uh, and then you plug a you can plug a, a transducer into it. But the screens all work with each other, and that's the way I I run uh, I run the boat. And then you can plug other things into your uh, your environment, like a radar or a stereo system or AIS, uh, and the way all of the screens talk to each other is something called NEMA 2000, right? So you might have heard that thrown around like when you're, you know, it's confusing as all hell because this is, this is like fairly advanced technology stuff. It's a network. So basically though, the, the, the network, when you hear someone th throw the word NEMA 2000 around, that's like a, that's the standard network that all the screens talk to each other with. And the thing that's nice about NEMA 2000 is you can even cross brands a lot of times. Right? I don't recommend doing it, but you can. Um, I have I have some, I have my fuel monitoring system is is not SIMRAD, but I have it running through my NEMA 2000 and all my fuel numbers come up, right? So that's what NEMA 2000 is. There's, there's, there's another network besides NEMA 2000, but we're not going to talk about that. It's too confusing. All right. Um, so that's, that's the general concept. You've got your you got your screens and you've got your network and then you got things that plug into the network, right? And that's generally the way it works, 
All right. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to talk about charts, GPS, and waypoints. All right. That's where everything starts. Then we're going to talk about radar, sonar, AIS, and autopilot. All right. Does, does, do you guys know the way GPS works? You guys even know what GPS is? Everybody's here. I don't have to go through like the satellites. You got like multiple satellites and multiple satellites will give you the view of uh, the, the thing that is important to know is that is that with modern electronics, the GPS receivers built into uh, is built into your unit. Right. So you just got to make sure that um, if you're using your unit as your GPS antenna, you've got a clear shot to sky. I. Um, I have a separate GPS antenna on top of the boat, right? But that's also, uh, I have, uh, it's got a comp, an electronic compass built into it because I need that for the autopilot, all right? Um, so this is a chart, all right? How, how many, do, do you guys like use your waypoints? Do you guys know what a waypoint is? All right, good, all right. So I don't have to totally go into, uh, into the waypoints, but what we're looking at, right? I don't know if you guys are close enough. Um, what we're looking at, right, these are waypoints right? This is a track. So this is like the, cor the course of the boat. And this is my course heading, right? So this is telling me where, where my boat's going. All right. These are all like super, uh, super important when we talk about fishing. All right. So with, let me just, uh, I'm going to orient us one more. I'm going to do one more thing. All right. This is another view of a chart. Don't worry about the circle here, but I've got the, you know, I've got the radar on, right? So the radar, when you're running radar, radar, can overlay on your chart. All right. Do you do you have do you use that? Okay, great. So if you can see, like this is the shoreline. These are buoys. This is like this is literally my uh, this literally is my screen. All right. This is literally what we use. So let's talk about how to use this for fishing. All right. And this, this stuff is kind of important. This is like if you want to use your electronics, this is the way it works. Every time you catch a fish, every time you catch a fish, you should hit a waypoint. All right, do you guys do that? Like every single time you catch a fish, boom, boom, boom. So if I'm bottom fishing, I'm fluking, I'm hitting a fish. I'm striped bass fishing, I'm, I'm hitting, my, hitting my waypoint. I'm offshore, I hit my waypoint. All right, what ends up happening over time is you get a cluster of waypoints. And the cluster of waypoints tells the story. It tells you where the fish are, right? So that's the first, that's like the most basic level of, of, of how to start finding fish. You create your own story, right? So you're on the reefs. So you may be like fishing on a reef in order, you know, like one of the many reefs that we have. The entire reef's not super productive. There's pockets of the reefs that are productive. So like if you keep on hitting, not just once, but every time you, you know, you really catch a fish, you get, and you'll get that cluster. And it's like, holy crap, look at this. There's like a little line of, there's a little line here. Uh, you know, I don't know what the heck is really going on underneath, but for some reason the fish are like lining, lining up. Striped bass fishing. You, so striped bass fishing, um, two different things. If you're trolling, you always you get a boat, you got to get a fish. Always hit it with bunker. I still hit it. The reason why I hit it with bunker is for two reasons. Reason number one is sometimes we're fighting a fish, and if it's a little rough, I'll lose the bunker school, and then I can just run back to the waypoint and just generally find where they are. The second thing is the bunkers seem to to gather in the same spots year over year. So when I'm looking, I'm looking for bait and I've got zero information, I'm hitting my, you know, like I'm in the area, I'll like kind of like go by, go my, by my waypoint and sure enough, oh, boom, there, um, there they are, right? You know, why they're there, I have no clue. It probably has to do with the way the currents are and stuff like that. But, you know, like on the North Shore, the bunker set up in, in the harbors, like in the same, in the same areas, you know, from, you know, where you are that they, they're setting up in like the same areas and the same depths and all. Right. They're not always in the same place all the time, but it's like, oh, they're here or they're here. I've seen them here. I've seen them there before. They're typically not in new, you know, new areas. Um, if they are, they're just moving through. Right. So use your waypoint to tell to tell your story. All right. That's concept number one. Concept number two. All right. Is how do you become deadly? All right. So now you know where to go. But the deadly part, like what we do, what separates us from non, you know, from like just people that are out there a little bit is called the short drift, All right? So if I'm fluke fishing and I catch a fluke, he's not or she's not the only one there. There's another, there's like probably five or six or seven or eight or 10 fish that are there, right? The question is, can you get your boat over that spot again? 
And this is where the electronics come in. Like I know as a fisherman, the fish are there. I, we're going to talk about what it looks like and stuff, but this is just boat, boat management. So how do I get my boat back over that spot? And we, we use everything on the screen. So I've got my waypoint. I know what I want to hit. And a matter of fact, the beautiful thing about it is if I hit a couple different waypoints, I've got, I've got a story like, hey, I'm drifting like, you know, I'm drifting like this. How many of these waypoints can I hit? especially if they're recent waypoints in a single drift. And I know that this waypoint is the one where all the fish are on. So I want to definitely short drift, short drift a single waypoint. So the way you do that is, number one, you pay attention with your track and the direction that you're drifting. So the track will tell you how you're drifting. you got to turn your track on. The other thing, too, with my chart is it makes it easier for me is I put course up. And what will happen is like what's in front of me is what, always what's in front of the chart. If you use north up, then you got to make sure that you can keep your act in, in control. Sometimes like you'll have to go backwards to go to where you want on the screen because you're like literally going the opposite direction. You're going, you know, if you're drifting south, you know, then right is left and left is right. So for me, when I'm tired, I just use I just use course up and always where I'm going is always, you know, what's in front of me is actually what's in is actually what's in front of me. All right. Um, but um, that's just me. You know, that's a personal thing. It makes it easier. It also makes it easier if my mate has to hop on the boat for a second and I want him to bump the boat a little bit. So the track tells you how you're drifting. So if I'm not and then my course. What will happen is, is my my course line will show me the direction that I'm drifting also as well. So the first thing I'll do is I'll set my boat up. You know, I'll see the way the boat is drifting. I'll set my boat up to where I think I'm going to go. And then what will happen is my course he heading indicator will tell me exactly where I'm going. So I'll bump the boat in and out to get over the exact spot that I want to get in, get on. Right now, the thing to um, the thing to to appreciate, I am literally getting like within three feet of where I want to be. That's like how dialed in I have. And I'll tell you a quick story about that. Um, I was, uh, I was fishing, um, on a, I got out on a Saturday evening. My wife wanted to go fishing. I went fishing with her. I had a charter that day, got home, showered. She's like, Oh, I want to go on the boat. I want to go fishing. I was like, all right, we'll, we'll run out. We'll go fluke fishing. We got on a wicked bite. It was really good. Um, my hands were wet and I set up on a fish and it was a really big fish. And as I set up on it, the rod flew out of my hand and I had to keep my crap together because the rod was a really expensive rod and I didn't exactly let my wife know about how much I spent on this rod. So, I mean, the rod was, it was like, a, you know, it was like a $650 setup that went, just went overboard. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm like, I'm really trying to keep my crap together because like, how do I not completely melt down that 650 bucks just went over the side of the boat? You know, it, it, obviously I'm not going to completely share with her, you know, how much it was. So, Anyway, I wasn't super happy the rest of the day, um, but the next, there, I knew that it was an evening bite. We were fishing into, into the night, right? So it was dark, and you know, I ran home in the dark, but I had a charter again the next morning, so we're out of false dawn, and I went to the same exact spot because I knew I had the bite there the night before. It was good. I knew the spot. Nobody was on it. I pulled off of the spot because... I, um, I didn't want to fish the spot out because we had a charter the next day. And second drift of the day, one of the charters pulls my rod up, All right? So that's, I mean, we're fishing in 55 feet of water. I mean, it, was on, it was on the AB Reef I did this on, right? It's like, you know, 55, 65 feet of water. So it wasn't like, you know, it was a, um, that's, that's how tight I'm, 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 bringing, I'm, I'm bringing the boat. But you use that with your track, your course, indicator and your waypoints right and that's and, but that's how you become a dialed in fisherman so you get that you get that fish right when you fluke fishing and i whack that individual spot i'll do short drifts i mean sometimes i'll will be only be in the water for 30 seconds right but 30 seconds man we're like tomahawking fish and as soon as they get it boom i spin the boat back the mates, you know, the mates dialed into me. He's like, he's managing everybody. He's rebating people. 
I'll spin the boat around because I'm pretty fast at it now, right? So I'll spin the boat around, you know, bet reverse it a little bit, stop it. I'm like locked in, boom, lines down. If I really, really, really want to be egregious about it, I'll put us in right, like literally right before it. And I'll, you know, I'll pull, I'll pull on it and just drop down. Like when I'm really dialed into a spike, sometimes these fish are stacked up and all these pictures that you see of us with all these fluke and we're limiting out and we're catching big fish. Generally, that's what we're doing. Right. Generally, that's what we're doing. Um, so you just got to be mindful um, of it. Kind of like find. I don't get caught up like, all right, I see somebody catch a fish like over there. So what? Let me find my own little piece where there's, there's fish on. There's fish everywhere. Right. It's just a matter of finding these little pieces and you catch that one fish. Like what a lot of people will do is they'll just do these long drifts and then they'll go back generally in the area and they'll just do like another long drift. Yeah, you're going to catch fish like that, but you're not really going to um, completely, completely. I'm going to talk about striped bass also, um, and I can even talk about tuna fish. Um, but you're not, you're not going to completely, completely, completely like tomahawk the fish, right? And that's the way you're. I do the same thing in Montauk. It's not even. It's not even like, hey, it's just a, a western or or more challenging area. That's the way you catch big fish in Montauk. That's the way you catch big fish everywhere. Right, and that's what cap, you know. That's what a lot of the captains are doing. Um, we're pretty good at it as well. That's probably the reason why we're having the success that we're having also uh, in the area. But that's the way. Um, that's the way that looks. Now, the other. Um, let me see. But, oh, okay, cool. This is important too. This, 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 this isn't a beautiful mind. All right. This is. This is. This is. This is actually me fluke, fluke drifting. This is a fluke drift. So what you're looking at here is. Um, we're drifting this way. I can tell you exactly from looking. The fish are here. They're like right in this little area. And I'm just whacking the crap out of this. Here's a short drift here. You see when I come around, where I came around here and I just stuck this right in there. That was one of those ones that I was talking about. Right. We probably had like a slammer fish for like the drift before it. And I didn't even bother doing the long one. I just took the boat. And I just threw us right. I just threw us right over the area that I'm drifting. And that's what it looks like. And then you have everything going on here. You've got... You've got waypoints here. There's a waypoint buried under there somewhere, um, and it, you just see me making the loops. And like, literally, like, look at look at this. It's like stacked. What do you think? Five hundred Oh, as far as like as as far as like how um, I will. Okay, this is a good question. When I'm trying to get within like the three feet, I put the thing in as far in as I can. As far in as it'll go. I'll have to pull it out a little bit just so I can get in the area because, you know, if I'm like 30 feet away, I'm like out of the screen. So I'll pull it out first. And then when I'm really trying to get on that one, that one little area, I'm all the way, all the way, all the way in. You know, it's a little, little crazy because everything's like moving around pretty quickly and stuff like that. But if I, if I, if I know that there, there's fish like that sitting on, sitting behind a rock or whatever, I pull it all the way in. Right. Um, is a, this is a lot of work, man. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not like, re, it's not relaxing. You know, that's the other thing too. Hey, let me go out and go fishing and like crack open a beer and hang out with my buddies. You can do that. No problem. But you're not going to do what we do. Right. Like, and that's the reason why, like, you know, that's the reason why I'm going, I mean, it's still awesome that I fish and, you know, fish for, for a living as part of it, you know, but it's still working. You know, it's not like super relaxing. I'm busy. I'm constantly, I'm moving all the time. I'm moving from spot to spot to spot to spot. Remember I talked before about like you keep on hitting your waypoints? Man, I'm moving from spot to spot to spot to spot to spot. Let me find them. Let me go, you know, I'm moving, you know, east-west. I'm going north-south. Same directions for you on the north shore. You know, I'm, that's, the way, that's the way I'm moving, all right? Now, I'm going to change species, right? We'll talk a little bit about striped bass. Okay, striped bass are interesting because striped bass aren't, I mean, they're on the bottom. Sometimes they set up. Like on the North Shore, I would chunk the, I'd chunk the crap out of the North Shore. I mean, first of all, you've got the bunker schools as well. But more importantly than the bunker schools, you've got tons of structure and you can chunk in the North Shore. So you snag a bunch of bunker and then you set up on a, you set up uh, up tide of a piece, anchor down, and then you're chunking into, uh, you're chunking into pieces. That's all about this, right? So, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back I'm gonna come back to chunking in a second but like for striped bass there's two ways that you're catching striped bass you're catching striped bass well, there's lots of ways but two ways I'm gonna talk about is on bunker schools so on bunker schools 
it's the same thing, man. Like, so a bunker school, first of all, if I'm working a bunker school hard, you can, I still, hit, I still hit my waypoints when I catch a striped bass. Um, and it just helps me figure out like what part of the bunker school is hot. All right. Cause the entire bunker school is never hot. There's always a part of the bunker school that's hot. Everyone, you know, a lot of people think that, oh, there's a bunker school and there's fish on there. Let me just drift and dream and go through it. It's, I don't drift and dream through anything. I'm actively fishing every single thing that, uh, every single thing that I do. All right. We're totally actively fishing. So that's the reason why the bunker schools are important. And also using the tracks, right, will help me figure out what the hell direction I'm drifting in because the bunker schools are also moving. So if I'm trying to like figure out, um, and sometimes the tide will, push your like my boat i'm all about tide the wind doesn't bother me some boats all about wind some boats are a combination of the two winds are swirling around all the time tides will change as they uh as they start pushing right so it's i use the tracks to kind of figure out like how the hell am i drifting um okay great let me just bump the boat back and forth i'm on my controls a lot also constantly bumping the boat back and forth no matter what i do all right but that's 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 how to use it now trolling this is deadly for trolling. Deadly, 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 right? So, man, I wouldn't, this actually could be look like I'm trolling too. I catch a fish. I hit a waypoint. The fish are there. I pay attention to what direction I'm going at. I'm going in. And what I'll do, the first thing that I'll do is I'll hit the waypoint again. I'll go past, like, say I'm trolling mojos, trolling... Uh, trolling spoons um what i'll do is i'll pass the width the the waypoint you know get we get the fish and i'll make a turn and i'll hit the waypoint in the opposite direction on the way back most times if i get a fish great if i don't get a fish i immediately pull my lines up and boogie back down spin the boat around drop everything really quickly and hit that waypoint in the same direction that i hit it when i caught the fish right and we'll typically catch fish again and then okay we're dialed in on fish and then if it if it turns out that the fish are dialed in in a direction man um we're fishing the crap this, this is the way we this is the way we catch so many striped bass when we're trolling i'll i'll hit the waypoint in the one direction we'll catch our fish the mate knows bring everything up as the and person is in the boat i just spin the boat around when he's, you know, he's setting the deck up and taking the pictures and everybody's all happy, they don't know that I'm working. I spun the boat around. I'm like running back down the other way, spin the boat the other way, throw the boat on autopilot, boom, drop all the lines back in the water and hook them up again. And because what happens is these bites last for like a half an hour and 40 minutes. So you want to put your boat, like, I know that as a fisherman, bites are 30 minutes, you know, half an hour, 30, 40 minutes they can last. I know that they set up in areas. I know that they can be direction dependent, but what do my electronics tell me? My electronics tell me exactly how to hit that again. They give me the, I have the track. I know the exact track I took that I, that I hit. I know the exact waypoint that I hit, right? I got my speed up there. I know how fast I'm supposed to be going. I got my course heading that we talked about before and we're whacking the crap out of that one spot. And that's the way you catch a lot of fish. Again, most people, when they're fishing are like just chilling out and there's nothing wrong with that man because this is not all that fun it's really not a lot of fun like when you're fishing hard like that i mean it's fun because it it depends on your mentality right like a bit and i talk about this with people also there's like there's there's different types of people and both types are great right i always pair a lot of fishing stuff to uh to ski because we ski a lot you've got people that like really love to hang out with each other and they ski. And they don't really necessarily care about skiing. They just like to ski together and they talk about it and they maybe like get out there at 11 o'clock or whatever. Then you got a, the people that like absolutely love to ski and they're like dialed in, they're like chasing the storms and all that. They're like chasing like the little areas and they get their friends around talking about what great skiers they are. Right, and I typically fall into the second category. Like we do things like super intensely, but I've got great friends, man. We still like talk about girly stuff, like feelings and stuff like that. And our wives never listen to us, so it's not like a he man woman haters club. But like when it comes to so like we're fishing, we're like fishermen, 
right? And like, this is what we like to do, right? And this is a lot of work, but this is like, this is what gets us, this is what gets us going. Like we're in that second category. And that's what fishing, like if you want to become like a, a, a deadly fisherman, this is the way you use your, this is the way you use your electronics to do that. Now, of course, you don't have to be so extreme. You could lighten it up a little bit. And hey, listen, if you're in the general area, that's, be that's better than being in no area. If you're going in the right direction, it's better than you know not doing the right thing. But you like really want to, you know, you really want to do it. You got to understand the fishing component of it, and then use your electronics. It's like, oh man, the fish are right here. Let me get my boat right here, right? The captain, the captain, a lot of time is doing captain stuff. He's not really on 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 the rods that much. You know, I'm pretty good on a rod. You know, um, I'm not really fishing. You know, especially when I'm captaining, I'm really captaining. But even like when I'm not working, we have a, we have a crew day. I still don't get the fish all that much because I got to run the boat. Because your boat is a weapon, your boat becomes a weapon via your electronics, it, captain skills, and electronics. And this is the way, this is the way you use it. All right. So I'm going to pause here. All right, because this is this is a lot of stuff I threw at you guys for questions. Like dial in. I want to make sure you guys actually understand what I'm talking about. And this isn't like one of these discussions that like oh I went to a discussion he told me stuff and I didn't really learn anything right or he told me a couple things like I don't want like when, we, when I talk I don't want it to be that way I'm gonna be like all right I got the way he's talking it may not be for you but like I understand the way he's doing it right and then when you're out there and and you're maybe not getting the success that you want you can think about some of the things that we talked about right so any questions about like the way I'm using the waypoints the way I'm using the tracks the way I'm using the the, the course like everybody so it depends on the machine. On the Simrad, it's not an MLB button. It looks like a little lollipop thing yeah. on it. Uh, which which machine do you have? Uh, okay, good. You got the good one. All right, that's a kick-ass machine. That's like a yeah. top-end machine. There's like a little lollipop on it. You just click that, and it, it lights up a waypoint. Right? I think you got to you got to answer all the data. No, you don't. No. No, man. Just enter it. So it says it says uh, number one, two, eight, ten. I don't care. Oh, okay. And Who then cares? It. Like, it doesn't matter. I like it. Like, I'll be honest with you. I don't even go back. And the only time I rename something is if it's a piece, you know, like that I didn't know that was on. Yeah. But like, if I'm in it, or or if there's one waypoint, name the piece, right? You can hit all the waypoints around it. And you know the different parts of the pieces, right? Don't like, dude. Like, don't, don't spend the time lavishly where you get a big return on it. Yeah. Right with anything, with equipment, running your boat. Like the biggest thing that we should all be talking about is where the hell the fish are. Not equipment, not anything else. Blah blah. blah. Like what you know, where the hell you get the fish? Not you know, people aren't going to get the spot. But you're just talking about it. You're talking about what we think it's going to be. Just constantly talking and constantly learning. That's the most important thing. The electronics. I need to be like on the spot as long as I know on the spot. I've got. I think I rolled my numbers actually. You know, like if you look, if you look at my machine, there are thousands of waypoints, man. It looks like somebody's got schizophrenia. You know, it's like literally, like my machine is like lit up with, now if you dial into the machine, it's not lit up. You'll see like all sorts of pockets and stuff like that and I'm whacking the crap. If I have no info, I'm going to where I caught these fish before. I don't have to rely on anybody. I don't have to ask them what they're doing, whatever. That's my, that's my, you know, and that's what works for me. Right, and that's what you should be doing for for yourself. Like constantly, it'll take it'll take a little while to do it. You know, the other thing, um, you know, this isn't an electronics thing, but this is a big thing that I advise people to do is to fish two days in a row. Fishing two days in a row is better than fishing every Saturday. You know, if you have to, you know, we all have a lot of family obligations and stuff like that. If you have to choose between fishing two days in a row or Saturdays, give up one of the Saturdays and just fish Saturday and Sunday. The reason why is you learn a lot more because you know what yesterday looked like because everything's changing all the time but things don't really change that much day over day um, so you can like if something worked for you then try that thing that worked for you somewhere else oh my gosh now you have like a bunch of info and use your electronics to find something else uh, if you know something wasn't working and you go back the next day you fish it for three minutes four minutes and see that it's not working again you don't spend your whole day doing nothing right so that's why two days in a row is really good um, it may not make everybody at home really happy, but um, it's more important to fish two days in a row than than once a week, right? That's one of the uh, that's one of the big things. Even when I'm fishing, if I'm changing species or whatever, if I'm going to a new area, I'll try to go out and pre-fish it a day before, 
right or grab it or like at the end of a trip I'll like an extended trip or whatever it's like all right bonus man I know we were doing this but we're gonna do this for an hour now that we're loaded up with fish and see how it goes right everyone's always happy to do that right the next time of day typically they are right so that's the story with that any uh, any other uh, any other questions with this was this helpful yeah I well, have a question about on my, I got to go on. Okay, so, uh, it all works the same, but go on. It's a of navigation chart and a fishing chart. All right, man. So, so just always use a navigation chart. I mean, they all have the waypoints on them. And a lot of, you know, so, so a lot of these guys are overlaying fishing information and they're trying to overlay fishing services. How do I feel about that? Um, if you have no information, it's better than, it's better than nothing. Right, like it'll give you a start because what they're doing is they're they're taking information about um, the fishing the fishing chart will will highlight reefs and stuff like that. So that part that part is good. But there's actually even services on top of that. Okay. Um, so uh, Garmin does it too. Um, it's serious offers like a fishing service now. Well, they'll actually say, "Oh, go here for tuna." You know. So I don't I don't exactly know where they're pulling it from. I've heard like three different stories. Um, but um, they're certainly taking from satellite shots. I'll see, you know, temp breaks or whatever. Yeah, it's good, I guess. You know, it's 100 bucks a month. Uh, you know, all information is great. You can't, like, live and die by it. Use it as part of it. But um, I don't know. I Do I have, did I run it last year? I ran it for a month. I ran it for a month. I was running offshore a lot. Um, but I only ran it because it was a special and they had it on my, they had it with, uh, as addition to the temp charts. But that's the, it has like fishing, it has like all the reefs and some wrecks in there. So I haven't had anywhere on the navigation, well, I've, I've, I've edited it on the navigation. Yeah, well, yeah, so that's, so you have the same reaction yeah. to it that I do. But if you're starting out, right, and you don't have any of that information, it's like incredibly useful. But the thing that I'm going to share with you guys is that you really want to understand what the heck you're looking at, right? Like, so a lot of people think that they're gonna use like something like that and they're gonna turn into a great fisherman and I'm gonna go to a spot that this thing says to go to and I'm gonna catch loads of fish, which you know never happens. You have to know what you're looking for. You have to understand how to fish it, right? And then you can use that and you go that area and you're like, oh, is what I'm looking for even in the area, right? So that's what, that's, that's the big, that's the way, that's the way to actually fish. Any other, any other questions about this? All right. What sonar is, is that's what's going on underneath the water. All right. And there's a couple of different pieces that you should know about. This is this is the sea deck, right? So what you're looking here, what you see here, there's like all little humps and bumps. I'm not going to be striped bass fishing this day, right? So I don't really care about the humps and bumps. But you can definitely like the 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 more red it is, the harder the bottom, right? And then you can also see. You'll see wrecks that'll, that'll show up, and you'll see the pieces that show up. So when you're hitting your waypoints, right, likely when you're fluke fishing, likely you're going to see like some rubble, you'll see something, or you may see some bait that's, that's here. This is a striped bass day, right, so you can see what was happening here. This is not a bad day, right, we're catching a lot of fish this day, right. Um, we even have some like other, like, it's, you know, we're really lucky. But um, so the way, you know, I, I typically, for me, I'm using auto on like 80% of my stuff, auto settings. What I do on my bottom machine is I hit the gain and I, I go, uh, I hit plus four over auto, or plus five over auto, just to make it a little bit more sensitive. It throws a little noise, extra noise into it. I don't like completely um, using, uh, when you're in deeper water, you have, to, you have to get more manual, but certainly anything less than 100 feet, all the auto settings are generally pretty good. Right. Um, again, I just make it like a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit harder. Um, but that's the, I mean, a little bit higher, you know, and that'll uh, that'll work. But um, what I want to make sure that I'm seeing is I'm seeing bait. You know, you can see like all the little bait in here, bait in here, bait in here. You know, a little bit of bait in here, and here's where the, you know, here's where the fish are. You know, is what you're, is really what you're, what you're looking at here. Fluke fishing. You see what the bottom is. You have your waypoint over the bottom. Now, here's a little trick. Right. Say saw a, uh, a piece, right? Like you're running along, like you're running, you're trolling or whatever, and all of a sudden you go over a piece and you're like, holy crap, that's not Mark, that's not anything, right? I want to get that. All you got to do is take your finger, right? When all the modern machines, no matter if it's Garmin or, or Simrad or whatever, take your finger, pull it back to where it was, 
stick your finger on it and hold it, and all the info comes up, and then you hit a save a waypoint. Right? That's another way like to get like all these cool, cool little spots to fish. Right? There can be bass that holds a hold on there, whatever. You know, for you, you can chunk. You know, you're trolling, right? Every time you troll, like you're open trolling on the North Shore, and you catch a fish, you should understand why the fish are there. Not if they're on the bunker schools, but like you're going over like different productive areas. Likely, they're setting up. North Shore fish is different than South Shore. South Shore is open beach. They're they're moving up and down. They're on the baits. They do settle in because water swirls a little bit. But North Shore is different. The bass will actually set up on pieces and wait for it to uh, wait for it to come. So. Um, Catch something trolling. Trolling is a great way to explore. Figure out, like, take a look in the area, what the heck it was, hit the waypoint, and then you can get to chunk it. You set up a little, you know, set up a current of it, anchor down, and then you chunk into that. That's what you, you know, that's what that's the North Shore guys should be doing. You can actually do it in the South Shore too. You can do it for wrecks and pieces and stuff like that within three miles. I used to chunk all the time. I don't have to really anymore because the fishing is so good. But if I ever really want to, um, you know, trophy fish bites off a little bit, I'll chunk it to a piece by us also as well. Right, you know, into there's all sorts of uh, rubble and all that. All right, so that's the that's that's the way you use that's the way you use sonar. All right, and you use it now. What I'll do is I'll split my screen. If I only have one screen, and half of it will be the chart, half of it will be um, half of it will be my sonar. There's actually one one con. I'm going to jump into radar. Um, I'm going to talk about radar a little bit more, but there's one other trick. There's a trick use them also for radar. If you're going to go fish a piece, right, even if you're you're fi fishing a fluke, fishing for fluke and there's other people around, or you're going to be running a little bit further, say you want to go chunk somewhere, say you want to go set up for bottom fishing, or whatever, you run your radar, and so see all these little dots? These are boats. Take a look at the little red dot over your waypoint, and then you know if there's somebody sitting on your piece or not, and you save yourself a trip, right? If you're about to do another drift and somebody jumps into your drift, which please don't do that if you see me fishing, um, but if you, you want to do another drift, you can take a look at all the boats that are around and see if anybody's over or in your area that you want to that you want to drift in. If they are, just you, know, you can wait until they drift out of there. But that's one of the, that's a, that's how you use radar for fishing and not for navigation. Right. Uh, also, the way you use the radar is like you flip the radar on, like expand the thing, and just take a look at like what everybody you know. You see a cluster of boats. I'm not a big cluster guy, but you can still see okay. There's a lot of boats that are over there. That's interesting. You know, maybe there's a bite over there. Maybe there's not. Right. When we're offshore. I'll uh, you hear people that are fishing or whatever. Um, I'll pull it out a little bit. I'll take a look to see what's you know who's, who's where, how are, how everybody's setting up in an area. By the way. When I'm offshore, I do the same thing with my uh, with my tracks, and I do the same thing when I'm catching fish. If I'm trolling, without a doubt, waypoint, boom, whack in a spot, all different directions. I'll hit it, get you know, get the pattern, and we'll uh, and we'll do that. Right. Who here runs autopilot? Nobody. All right, autopilot was life changing for me. I put it on the. Uh, I had a smaller boat. We had our 26, and if I knew what I knew now, um, I would have put it on that boat as well. Autopilot totally changed changed uh, our life because it keeps the boat straight. So when I'm trolling or even running the boat or going from place A to B, it uh, it helps me. But it really helps me when I'm fishing, especially when I'm trolling, because I'll set the heading with my autopilot, and then when I turn, I turn the boat with my autopilot. I just take a button and I just like roll it over 20 degrees at a time. And it completely helps me not tangle my line. They used to tangle my lines all the time. We would get a fish on, I would turn around, you know, talk to talk to the mate, and the boat would spin when I turned around. So now the boat stays straight. Or if I was turning the boat around, sometimes I would do it too quickly, but I wasn't paying attention, and I would, you know, I would I would tangle the lines, both offshore and inshore. So autopilot uh, definitely changes that. And plus, I can. Um, I can create like I can create like different ways. There's two ways to use autopilot. You can put on a heading, or you can hit a waypoint and say go to waypoint, or you can put create a route and just have the thing going around. When we're offshore fishing, I'll fish a ridge, and I can set my autopilot to fish a to fish a ridge as well. So autopilot is good. It's, it's, it's not even this is going to sound crappy. It's not even that expensive. It's three grand right to put autopilot on your boat right. So like it sounds like. To talk about three grand not being a lot of money is, is a little crazy, but like in the scheme of things, of how much fuel costs, equipment costs, and all that, like one, you know, one of our, 
one of our most of our outfits is you know twelve hundred bucks. Right, each of our rod, maybe it's more. Um, yeah, or, or actually, you know what? It's more. It's uh, uh, yeah, it's more like fifteen hundred. I know the number I should share with my wife. But um, the uh, yeah, so each of our rods are fifteen hundred bucks that we're that we're fishing offshore with, right? So what if I'll three thousand dollars? It's going to make me more a more efficient hunter. That's uh, that's important, right? Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is AIS. Do you guys know what AIS is? Do you use it? No? All right. All right. So what AIS is, is it our, our boats um, register their information um, with a uh, sent, uh, they register it on their boat and then their boat transmits information to everybody else out that, hey, here I am. This is my boat name. This is how big I am. And this is the direction that I'm going. And there's, there's two ways that AIS is really good. One way is that when you're navigating um, at night or in the fog, anybody who's, who's anybody, as far as like size of boat and all, is explicitly transmitting AIS. So all the all the ships are, um, and all the bigger, all commercial boats generally are, and a lot of the bigger sport fishermen are. So what will happen? It's this will this will show up on your chart as well. You see, just like a little triangle, and. All the information about the boat will, will show up. Will, will show up here. And there's two ways to get it. You can set up your radar. This is Simrad, um, but they all work generally the same way. Anything that's within your range, it'll automatically pop up. Or you actually stick your finger on the ship name, and everything about the ship comes up. Right. So navigating it's important when you're going fishing, and if you're running offshore. Uh, if you get stuck in fog and you have to go across a shipping lane, this is the way I run Raritan. This thing's this thing is AIS is really good. I got to pay attention to what the ships are doing. I can't you can't tell. I mean, you can tell if you really you know pay attention to your radar. But I can quickly like hit hit a ship in a shipping channel and say, okay, this guy is like flying. He's doing like 15 knots coming through him, and I gotta like not go near him. I'm gonna go behind him. Or you see somebody crawling in at you know three four knots. I can sneak in in front of him. The other way is that when you're offshore. A lot of boats have their AIS on, and you can take a look. You find all the squid boats, you find all the trawlers, you find all the fishermen, or a lot of fishermen, not all of them. That's the other way. That's the other way to find it. You press right on the boat name, and it'll tell you exactly what they are: fishing boat, recreational boat, squid boat, whatever. That's going through your radio, right? Yeah. Then makes to the well. So getting back full circle. It's on your radio, but you take your radio and you plug your radio into the NEMA 2000 network, and then it'll start showing up on your on your display screens, and that's full circle, right? So, um, and that's what we uh, that's what we got. But this is the way this is the way I use my this is the way I use my electronics. This is it. This is the way we become you know pretty deadly using it. Again, I've got the underlying knowledge. I know where what I'm fishing for. I know where I want to go, but then the electronics tell me exactly what I'm looking for. It's not the other way around. The electronics won't talk, you know, the electronics won't tell me what to do, but they'll answer my questions. Right, that's the best way to think about it. Right? They, they, won't, they won't proactively tell me where the fish are. But I ask my electronic a question and it'll answer it. Right, it'll tell me like where it is, or hey listen, I, I wanna get back over that rock. Where is that rock? It'll tell me where the rock is. But I have to know the rock is there. You know, I have to know that that I want to fish on that rock or a rock or I want to I want to fish in 50 feet of water on structure. That's what I want to do. So now I'm going to use my electronic to find that 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 little tiny piece of structure or a bigger piece of structure or an area or whatever. Or I caught a fish. Why the heck did I catch a fish here? What's going on? And then you look and you're like, oh, you know, there's there's a uh, there's a little lump somewhere. Oh, that's where I caught that fish. Let me go back and save that thing. Great. I may name that lump. Right, like a super, you know, like hey, lump, you know, lump one, lump two, lump three. But it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really matter because what I'll do is I'll fish. Like when you're when you're looking at your waypoints and you want to fish, so I'll go to the area that I think the fish are on, or and and then I'll like look for my waypoints that are in that area. Or I say, hey, I want to go. What am I doing? Fluke fishing in July, 50 feet of water. Let me take a look at what I got in 50 feet of water. You know, I might even go outside my area take a look at some charts or whatever um, but I'll look I'll, you know I'm looking I'm looking there oh hey it's August I'm gonna go to 70 feet of water 
you know, I move my chart to 70 feet of water, open it up, like this is literally opening it up so I can see, I can bring it in a little bit. What waypoints are in there? They're there. Oh, I want to go bass chunking in Maine, June. Um, in the in the harbor, that's great. I know last year in the fall, I caught fish over these little lumps there. Let me try chunking there, right? Because you gotta know how to fish because you can chunk, but then okay, you're fishing on the incoming, you're fishing on the outgoing, you wanna be fishing on the end of the tide and all, but my electronics will tell me where I wanna fish. And it'll also tell me which way I'm drifting. But then I gotta, I gotta ultimately make a decision on how I'm gonna fish that piece. Right, and I think a lot of people, where it becomes overwhelming with electronics, is they expect the electronics to talk to them, tell them what to do, show them how to do things that they don't know how to do, versus you're the one telling your electronics what to show you. Right, if that makes sense, right? Like, you gotta be in control. Electronics, show me this, and they do, versus you. Great example, I'm gonna end, I'm gonna open it up for discussion, but. But a uh, gentleman here talked about like that the fishing map, right? It's it's like all right, I got the fishing map or the fishing view. The fishing view isn't going to tell you squat if you don't know what you're looking for, right? You you bring that fishing view up, you bring that area up, and like you even go to that area where it says there should be fish. Like what the heck am I looking at? The thing says like well, a lot of people get to the area, they don't see anything, they'll fish for a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. an hour, maybe even all day, they don't catch anything, and they're like, this ball sucks, electronics suck, fishing sucks, I hate my wife, I hate my kids, I'm gonna sell the boat, <laughs> right? I mean, I've, had, I've had a lot of those days, like, <laughs> you know, so it's like, yeah, yeah I walk in the door, you know, so I need some space. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun, right? Yeah, right. Um, but um, versus, like if I saw that on a on a chart, like a fishing area, like or to say the fishing service, like lit up an area, I go to the area. All right, what the heck is here? Is there a temperature break? Okay, great. I see the temp break. Is there any bait here? Oh, let me look at my tronics. Oh, I see the bait. Oh, I see the bottom. Great. I know what I'm looking for, and then it means something to me versus just blindly, blindly asking my electronics to hook me up. Right. That's the, that is the thing. That's the mentality. It's like that with fishing too. You gotta. You. It's expensive spent some time doing it. Now, obviously, I'm giving you from like a very advanced lens, but no, so what you do, the way you become from nothing to something, is you start like just cracking the little pieces. And you may never get all the way over to the to the end, right? You may never be perfect, right? But at least if you become more and more dialed in every time you go out or every, every month or whatever, you'll get better, you'll see, you guys will see. So it's like pick one thing to start doing. Okay, I'm gonna start using my track to figure out which freaking way I'm drifting. Great, boom. You're cooking with gas. It's like so much more than you were doing before. I'm using waypoints every time I catch a fish. That's awesome, good for you, right? Boom. I'm trolling. I'm gonna hit the same direction when I catch one fish. I'm gonna go right over. Man, I, you guys are gonna think about me, hopefully, um, when you're fishing, and you're gonna catch a fish, and you're gonna repeat the fish exactly, and you're gonna catch another fish, and you're like, crap, he was right. Right, I mean, you know, maybe crappy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. If you do it, you don't catch another one. Don't, you know, it happens to me too. It's not every single time, but it's an odds thing that we're playing, right? Because we don't control any of this wildlife, right? There's like nothing predictable. That's the other thing that makes this thing tough, right? Nothing's predictable. The variables change. There's like eight different variables, and in each of those eight different variables, there's sub variables, and that's what makes fishing hard, all right? The other thing, um, that you could do. This is a little bit of a shameless plug here. But you can go out with a charter captain. Like, people on my boat, and they ask me questions, I'll show them. I don't care. You know, I actually set up electronics for people, too. Like, I'll do that. I'll go, I'll hop on their boat and, uh, and set their electronics up for them, set their views up and all. There's something with Sim... Who here runs Simrad? Besides this one. Okay, you do, too. Which, uh, you have ra radar? Yeah, both, yeah. Which radar do you have? 4K. The 4G. Okay. Your radar and your radar do something that is ultimately the coolest thing in the world. So basically what you guys can do is you can run two radars at once, all right? You, there's, a, there's an A channel and a B channel on your radar. So what happens most of the time is that if you're running radar in multiple views, so you can run a radar in your regular radar scope and then you can do a uh, radar overlay on your chart when you, um, when you come in and out on your regular radar view, it screws up your chart. Your chart will go in and out also, right? It gets all pokey. 
what you can do is you can run radar A on your charts and radar B on your radar view and they're completely independent. It's like running two different radars. So like when I'm running at night, I have one view that's like super tight when I'm running the inlet. I'm running, I'm running with like a quarter mile um, view. And then the other view I have is like a mile out when I'm running the inlets. Then when I get now when I'm done with the inlet, I'll bring my close view to a mile, and then the other view I'll run eight miles, running at the same time, right? And it's completely independent. It is the coolest thing in the world. It is awesome, and nobody knows about it. I've talked to Navigo about it all the time. I'm like this is the coolest thing that you guys do, and absolutely nobody knows how to use it, right? But it's all sorts of things like that that are that are in there. That 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 not everybody uses the same function, right? That that's one function that whenever I tell people about it, everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever," right? But that's the uh, that's the story with that. But again, it's hard. If if you want to um, jumpstart it, you know, you can go and take a little bit away a captain. Every captain does what I do to some degree. Um, every every uh, every pro captain, you know, some may talk about it, some may not. Um, I'll talk. Like I said, I'll talk about it. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I got, you know, generally I've got nothing, there's some things I keep close to the best, this is not it, right, uh, generally, and there's some things that I'll keep close to the best, but, uh, again, I mean, like, people can smoke, if you know what you're doing, you can smoke this stuff out in a few seconds anyway. Like, if you really know what you're looking for, you can figure out what the hell I'm doing. Like, even when, like, I'm undercover, you can still figure out what the hell I'm doing. It doesn't matter, like, it, it's just that people don't know, generally don't know, they're not, they're not going through the progression of everything, so they, 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 you know, they're thinking about like, hey, just tell me where to go and what to do and all that. But that's, it doesn't even matter. I can tell you what to do and where to go, and you go there the next day and it'll be different. Maybe not a lot different, but different enough that where you are is you got to go like ten feet shallower or deeper. Then how do you do that? And how do you know it doesn't look good? Right. But the electronics help you. I tell the electronics, find me my spot 10 feet deeper. This is what I'm looking for. Oh, look, I have a waypoint here. Oh, I'm going to chart here. Oh, look, I've got a spot here that I just found. Right? That's what you're doing. Okay, question was uh, side scan. I don't. Um, side scan, side scan, a lot of people do use side scan. I don't. Um, I don't. I don't like information overload. Right, I can't. I don't like. I don't like too many things coming at me at one time because then I can't. I can't filter stuff. Right. Typically with side scan, side scan is good um, if you're fishing on pieces to tell you what's going on. You left to your right. If you're fishing offshore, and hey, is there fish left to right? I'm gonna hit left to right anyway, man. It doesn't matter. I'm like covering the area, and even if I see fish, like so, I'm offshore. If I see fish 25 yards and 30 yards to my left, I can't. Turn, I can't spin my boat around that quick anyway. And I can see birds and whatever, and I'm gonna. Call, I see bait, you know, like everything's moving. I'm in the area, so I don't use side scan um, on pieces. Like I generally know how to read charts and stuff like that. But like for people who maybe aren't that that comfortable with it, um, side scan is great. But again, before you use side scan, are you really good with everything else? Well, that's the thing. I don't. I, I don't have the transclusion that, that does it. At least a couple trains do that. So I'm thinking. I know the answer to this. AIS versus, uh, not AIS, uh, autopilot versus high speed. Oh, I would go autopilot, man. Yeah, I know that. yeah with that, all day long. Yeah, I, like honestly, I steer my boat on autopilot like 95% of the time. I got this little wheel on my autopilot, I have a commercial autopilot, and I just like turn my, my little tiny wheel, turn my little 35 foot boat back and forth. I, um, I also, since I run multiple screens, I can run, because everything's all integrated together, I run my autopilot from every screen too. So I can be in the back of the boat, and I'm on autopilot trolling, and I'm like, hey, let me just uh, move over a little bit. I'll just move it, I'll just move, uh, move the boat over. You know, so it's, yeah, autopilot. That's my, sorry, that's my and The difference between down scan and sonar. All right, so down scan, let's see if I have a picture of down scan on here. Uh, I mean, it's the same thing, right? No. Really? No. It's got a, it's a different view. Shit, I don't know the view. Okay. Down scan will show you the bottom. All right. Sonar is really good at showing you the fish and showing you generally what's going on on the bottom. Down scan draws, like, gives the bottom, like, fine detail. 
So if you're fishing a wreck, it'll like really show you what the wreck looks like, right? Whereas, whereas um, sonar will just kind of like be like more of a blob. Right? I don't use downscan. A lot of people do. Um, I think if you're a bottom fisherman and you like you might like black fisherman, um, you know, downscan could be a good thing. I mean, personally for me. Like I know what the piece looks like, I can feel it anyway. I'm just like moving my, you know, like just moving the anchor back and forth anyway over a piece. Um, typically, I'm only fishing one anchor, so I'll, I'll I'll go back and forth a little bit anyway. If you have dual anchor, maybe I guess, but I, I'll still figure out the piece by covering the piece and, and, and like really zeroing in, zeroing in on it. Yeah, that's where you black fishing. Yeah, yeah, black fishing will work good. You know, it's not going to give, give you a great view where it's better on the bottom, but it doesn't give you a great water column view. I mean, it just show up some fish, but it's like, it's the, the view's hokey, but the bottom's like really mapped out. Again, I'm pretty simple. Like, I'm very dialed in with some things, and, but I'm simple unless I need to be precise. Like, is there a reason why I need the down scan? Is there a reason why I need to know if there's like a piece of wood sticking up like this versus, and, 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 and take away from seeing what the water column looks like. You know, if I'm sea bass fishing, I don't want down scan. I want to be fishing with sonar because the sea bass sometimes sit above the wreck. They'll sit 10 feet, 20 feet, 30, 40, 50 feet off, off the wreck, 50 feet off the wreck, get higher up. You know, so I don't, I wouldn't use down scan for the sea bass fishing. I'd stay, I'd stay on my sonar. Black fishing, maybe. Black fishing isn't great by us. You know, I know people get, you know, upset. Well, the North Shore is really good. I get the boat. Yeah, I'll come get a good hire, maybe come run the boat, no problem. <laughs> the, um, the, uh, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you know, fly fishing is, is good by us, but it's not as good as, um, you know, some of the other areas. By us, the Western, the Western South Shore, what's really good is we've got some of the best striped bass fishing around. Our fluke fishing is extremely, extremely good. We've got cobia that are showing up now. Our tuna fish is off the uh, off the charts good. We've got a lot, a lot of good fishing by uh, by us as well. But um, and my electronics are dialed in to find that. Can you use the radar to pick up birds? No. Yeah, that can. Yeah, that can. yeah. 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 absolutely. No, I'm still kind of my okay. Yeah. yeah. Sand no, but I'm using I'm using the radar to make sure that people aren't on the spots that I want to drift on. Oh, I see. Right. So that's the uh, that's the big uh, that's the big thing there, you know, and that's huge, right? It saves a ton of time. Or if I'm going black fishing, I want to make sure somebody didn't set up on my piece, right? If I'm going striped bass fishing, I want to striped bass fish in an area. Is it a zoo there? If it's a zoo there, I'm not going there. Forget it. I'll go somewhere else. It saves me the it saves me the uh, the ride, you know, a couple miles away, and I can see it. What's going on? You know, the other thing too is um, you can tell. Um, the more modern radars have um, they, co they have color, so if it's going you know towards you, it's one color away from you, it's another color. So you can tell what the heck everybody's doing, right? All right, was in a circle, tight circle. There's a bite going on there. Especially offshore, you can see that, right? If you see like lots of people that are like making you know like oh they're one color now, everyone's trolling in different directions and all. There's a bite. There's a bite there versus people just kind of aimlessly wandering around. You know, same thing with the bird. You can tell if the birds are moving in one direction or if they're doing this. Because the birds will be all different colors. If they're if they're you know staying in there and they're diving, they'll be one color if they're all going one direction. So that I, I run that as well. I run the color uh, color palette on that for sure. So, all right. Any other questions? You good? Was it helpful? Very yeah. Good. Okay. Cool. All right. Now I'll tell you. This is the first time I've done the electronics seminar. So that was the, uh, obviously I know how to do it. I had all the slides and stuff like that. I, I've done parts of it with fishing, but this is the first time I did just an electronics one. This is what I found and I wanted to do one because what I found is like a lot of people were asking me a lot of questions about their electronics and questions were kind of all over the place. And it's like, all right, I think that there's like a general misunderstanding of like the way to really dial your electronics in. I just uh, appreciate you guys being the guinea pigs. There's no general user manual. It's, you really have to kind of figure out what you can do. Okay, you know, so the manual is there. It's online, but you got to figure out what you need to use. Right. 
Dude, manual. the manual is. You just don't even know those. I don't even have manuals for mine. They, they it should be online. Out. You should be able to find one. It's right, but now I'm doing something else instead of just you know getting the thing and looking through it and like, oh, it does this, it does this. The manual for Zimrat is like this fat. It's so like I've read it, you know, but it's it's overwhelming. So what you uh, you know, I read it just to like just to understand yeah. if what features and functions are there in case I ever. Oh, it does that. That's really cool. I don't go run, run, run out and set it up. The problem is that when you, you I, I read my whole manual front to back, right? When yeah. I first got the book. The problem is that when you're out there and you try to set it up, people come to try to get through the screen. So, Simrad, here's the deal with Simrad. Simrad obviously is really awesome. I see. Uh, it's it's my. I run lots of boats with like lots of different electronic packages. I, I, I shared that with you guys before. Once Simrad is set up, you can get to everything you need within one to two button clicks, right? And there's some real. There's some advanced features in there that are really good. You just have to know how to set it up. Honestly, I recommend having somebody who knows what they do set your stuff up. It'll save you. Let's see, you tons of, of time. The person can show you what they use. They ask you if they're good. They'll ask you, how do you fish? What do you do? Great. Let me set up this view, that view. Let me set up your electronics, uh, your radar views. Let me A and B you guys. You know, that's uh, it's huge, right? It's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely huge. It saves you a ton of time. Of time. Um, somebody who actually knows, okay, you're going to use this feature, but not this feature necessarily, right? Setting up all the different, setting up your track right, setting up your charter orientation right, all that stuff. You know, there, it, it's all it's all complicated. Um, some of the companies are out of the box, a little bit different than other companies, but the companies without, I know the differences side by side of what one does better than the other. I'm not going to go into that. Um, it's not completely fair since I'm Simrad Navigo Pro staff. If I was on a floor somewhere, you know, like in a store helping out, I might go into it, but not certainly not at a uh, at a seminar like this. But what I will say is that um, once Simrad once the Simrad is set up, it's really easy to get to things. Right, one to two clicks, I'm there, like flashing across views pretty quickly. Right, that's the big. That's the big. Uh, Garmin is good too. Garmin. Garmin, Garmin is good. Um, they're probably, you know, they probably have more of a passive user profile than an active user profile. Is what I would say on that. You know, Garmin, you know, Garmin guys, me. There's exceptions to everything, and it's a, it's a general rule of thumb. It's what I found from my personal view, right? But I ran Simrad first before I was on their, you know, pro staff. Uh, and it was for a reason. Right? Yeah. But the Navionics trip that it does here made a difference. Yeah. Always put C map in too, also, which is um, yeah. The, the, so the Navionics ship was interesting. I think it's finally working with Garmin again, but Navionics is owned by Garmin. Owned by Garmin, it but it doesn't, it doesn't work in Garmin. Except they just started. It just started working. I think their latest their latest line. They finally got it working with it. You have to use that blue uh, the blue chart with uh, with Garmin uh, for the Navionics uh, for the Navionics ship. But the newer stuff, I think, just started using it. Um, yeah, I got the blue chip in mind. Okay. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, it's a, all the Pretty data, cool. the underlying data is all the same. It's all coming from Noah, yeah. right? So it's all it's just how these guys all uh, all pulled it out. Even like the strike lines and all that stuff is all from they. I think that they enhance it, but it's it starts out from Noah data, right? I find for up here up here in the north, it's one of the regular chip, you know regular chips is fine. You're not going to get any secret sauce. From one of the uh, yeah, the only reason why I got it was the contour map. Yeah, it's so much better on the Yeah, yeah, it's pretty uh, cool. Yeah, without a doubt. All right, feel free run. to take a card. Thank you. Yeah, no worries, man. I'll see you out there. Yeah, yeah. all good. Yeah, very good. Thanks. Yeah, and follow us on social media.